Good morning, everybody. I'm Tricia Gordon at the University of Virginia, and welcome to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call today, May 16th, 2018. Um, delighted to have you guys on the call. Um, we're going to get started with some project updates and announcements. So I would like to invite anyone who has any to go ahead and come on the mic and share what they have. Hi, this is Wilma. Um, I just wanted to announce real quick, and you may have seen the, the email that just went out to the announce list. Um, there is currently um, a, a submission for showcase reception for the at Open Aperio. So um, it's going to be, I think, Monday evening. The, um, it's kind of like a poster session format. It'll be, it'll be in the reception space and there'll be tables sort of around the edges of the room where people can do a small demo or a poster session. Um, the, uh, the conference sponsors will also have setups there. So if you're interested in doing something like that, a, a quick showcase during the reception, um, you can get your proposal in um, between now and May 22nd. And let me just um, paste that the URL here. Next Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah, that's next week. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. I apologize for that. It was kind of left to the last minute there because um, <laughs> we weren't sure about the setup of the room and that sort of thing. So um, that's the URL. I just put it into the chat. And um, again, it's it's short, informal, you know, poster session style presentation. So you don't have to do a lot of prep. Okay, and just like bring your own laptop or or an actual poster or and exactly. That sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, and it's going to be in the reception space. So great. Yeah. That sounds like fun. Hopefully, we get some people to sign up. That's wonderful. Uh. Let's see, um, and 12.1 just got released, so I, I'm sure folks have seen that email announcement. Um, but that is noteworthy. Anybody else have any updates or announcements? All right, oh, LAMP. That's right, is already in production for 12.1. Um, some of you may have seen the email from Martin Ramsey this morning about that. That is awesome and very pioneering of the LAMP Consortium to, to be the first to dip their toes in the water. So awesome. Congratulations to all of, all of the LAMP Consortium folks. Okay, um, anything else? All right. Uh, so we are going to, I didn't include this on the agenda that I sent um, on yesterday, the reminder of this meeting, but uh, we're going to do a JIRA re review. Uh, and let me paste this JIRA into the chat and also I'll share my screen so if you don't want to look at it that way, you can look at it on my screen. Give me just a second. Well, I thought it was going to I need more than a second. Here we go. 
All right. So, um, so where did I put that? Hold on one second. Here it is. This. Uh, so we're going to try to include these um, teaching and learning label JIRAs in our calls once a week and spend about five minutes. Uh, so this issue was opened by Derek Ramsey recently in April, and um, Derek is not, I don't know if Derek is on the call today, I don't think so, but um, this issue is around when a quiz allows multiple submissions. The first time a student submits, um, at, if an instructor has modified the submission of the assessment, the student will get an, an alert that says it has been modified since you submitted. And then thereafter, that same message appears. Uh, and so the proposal is that this second notice not appear. And so any um, input from any of you about this, what, what we could do, what we should do? Anyone care to comment? Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat. Okay. Nobody cares about this, so uh, <laughs> that's fine with me. Uh, we will just keep moving. All right, so I'm going to give Corey Nicoletti from Marist um, presenter privileges. So um, Corey's going to be sharing with us uh, how they engage students with video blogs in Panopto at Marist. Um, so Corey, I think I've given you presenter privileges if you want to go ahead and start your slideshow. Awesome. Thank you very much. Just bear with me a second. Get my phone. All righty. Um, so I, I really, when, when I had talked about doing a presentation uh, with Matt, I was like, you know, let me, let me do Panopto. Panopto is a really interesting tool that kind of fell into our lap lately. It's a really interesting story behind it on how Mira started using it. Um, and we kind of had some unprecedented success with it. So um, we just had some great stories to share. Um, so I don't have the chat open. So if I have anything come in um, as I toggle between my slideshow definitely um, I'll, I'll try to bounce between the two. I'll, I'll let you know. Awesome, you back. Yeah. So, um, so Panopto, um, so let me give a little background on my position here. I know Louisa was more involved with the teaching and learning calls. Um, so I'm hoping to pick up, you know, a little bit more involvement over here for Maris. So I'm the educational technology specialist. And I think the best way I can describe what I do is by explaining my favorite part of my job. And that's when faculty come to me and say, here's where I am and here's where I want to be. And I help them figure out the middle. Um, and Panopto is a really good tool, a really great tool that's really helped facilitate a lot of faculty knocking on my door lately. Um, so before I go into too many details about Panopto, I want to give a little background in some of our approaches to faculty support. Because Panopto answered a lot of these bullet points. Um, so Many of these probably look pretty standard um, to other instructional designers in ed tech support. Um, you know, we have our workshop and certificate tracks, um, which out of that kind of came our hybrid 49 pilot, which I'm going to cycle back to 
cannot because I have the header there. Um, our reactive response, which is your gotchas, if they fix my grade book, oh, by the way, I noticed this is going on in your lessons. Um, we have our faculty outreach, which has been a new initiative. Um, it's been kind of a rapid fire, beat up Corey in the front of the room and ask her all the questions you want. So we get a lot of love, we get a lot of hate, <laughs> we get a little bit of everything in that kind of a meeting. And basically it's all the faculty, they, you know, they meet monthly. Um, and we've asked the deans and schools to give us time to stand in front of their faculty. So those have been some interesting approaches, but so beneficial. Um, sometimes people have complained about something and we've gone, actually, did you know? Um, so it's been a really great perspective there as well. Um, our self-paced support and documentation, that's your standard videos, PDFs. Um, our message of the day, we've been doing a lot of gifts lately. Um, that's how a lot of people have learned about site favorites. Um, it's kind of those little things that you you don't really kind of get to teach anybody unless they're sitting next to you. So those gifts kind of have been really helpful for that. Um, and then we have some school specific initiatives. Some schools have specifically reached out to us to say all of our faculty want to learn more about this. Um, and you know those kind of conversations have really been great when you get all the same faculty with the same subject matter experts in the same room. Um, I once went in to talk about lessons and we spent about 30 minutes just talking about Font Awesome on one of those. It was kind of interesting. Um, so cycling back to where Panopto comes into play here. Um, with our reactive response, we had a lot of faculty who were using WebEx, um, primarily designed for video conferencing, as a recording tool. And WebEx recordings are not meant to be watched. It's this little tiny grainy video. It's just not great. <laughs> so that kind of identified a need that we had faculty who, whether they were teaching fully online um, and they didn't want to do synchronous sessions to be able to appeal to their students' varying schedules, um, we needed that video capture tool, something that was not just, in, not just recording that talking head, but something that really elevated that process and um, facilitated that for our faculty to make that easy. Um, and our hybrid 49 pilot is one place that we've integrated both of those tools to kind of play the seesaw tug of war game to kind of say, we have WebEx, we have Panopto. Here's when you use this one, here's when you use this one. Um, we created a, I think I'm making this word up, a try Venn diagram of how to interact with their students as well that I'll, that I'll share out later. Um, and that allowed faculty to visualize when to use which. Um, so we primarily focus on the pedagogical aspect behind optimizing their face-to-face -face time, um, whether it was a flipped classroom model or a fully online course, um, or in this case, the hybrid 49, um, which lends itself to that flipped model. Um, so, Panopto. Panopto, I call Panopto my, my little dessert cherry on top. I do a I do a presentation on my LPI tools that I've recently integrated into our system for our faculty. And Panopto is my dessert. Um, and I jokingly say, you know, have you ever gone out to a restaurant with friends and while you're in the bathroom, somebody tells the waiter it's your birthday? And it's not. It's totally not. They just wanted you to be embarrassed and send out some free ice cream. Um, so Panopto is my free ice cream. Um, so probably about a week, two weeks before our fall semester in 2017 started, um, we, it, it turned out to be a great partnership that we just kind of said, well, you know, we have this little tiny excess of money. What can we do with it? Let's get something awesome. Um, and Panopto kind of fell on our lap. So um, it wasn't necessarily something our department had identified, uh, but it was something that we, we ended up kind of bringing in and, and shepherding into our office. Um, so it was really unique in regards to our timings versus needs. Um, it was horrible timing, but the need was totally there. And that's where a lot of our gotchas came from. We had a lot of faculty that were recording using WebEx. Um, and we were able to say like, hey, I noticed you use WebEx often. Do you think Panopto might be a better tool? Let me tell you about it. Um, we had some faculty champions and what I mean by that is it's the faculty who said like, yeah, I'll try this new tool. Um, and I know everyone can relate. You have some faculty who say like, uh, 
mad. You're brand new. I'll let you figure out the kinks first. We had some faculty who dove headfirst in, um, and they had a love-hate relationship with me. I think they, um, as much as I was a great resource for them, they were a great resource for me in the effect that they were finding all of the problems that we had to document. And then we had some secret showstoppers. We had some faculty who we came across them using Panopto because we recently ran a report to see what sites were using this tool. And we found that they not only were using the tool, but they were using all the nitty gritty features that we hadn't really cheer led about. We hadn't shaken our pom poms about some of the awesome things Panopto can do that I'm going to elaborate on. Um, one of our biggest pieces was we had some issues with authentication and that's always an issue um, I think when you're integrating tools and that's going to kind of surface as I talk more about what the tool itself does. Um, and I have this last line here, just one more bite. It's kind of when you when you order a whole table dessert and and you're all just kind of like nobody wants to finish it but everyone secretly wants to finish it because it's just so good. Um, Panopto had so many bells and whistles and features that there's just kind of always a little bit something more for our faculty and, and we're not using it in its entirety yet. And of course, we're only at a year um, of use and we haven't really marketed it yet. We haven't really pushed it out there um, to say to faculty, hey, check out this tool. We haven't had faculty really had the opportunity to realize that they're really interested in it. Um, so this is a screenshot of Panopto to the faculty member. And the reason I chose this screenshot to share is because there's, as I mentioned, so many bells and whistles. Um, this is the editing perspective of Panopto that's available to our faculty. Um, there's simple editing and there's more in-depth editing. Um, your simple editing lets you trim just the beginning and the end, where in-depth lets you get a little more in the advanced editor um, cutting from the middle. Um, and you'll see it, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Camtasia, it's a condensed version of Camtasia. And some faculty will record and never open this window and just share it. Um, other times they'll um, fully implement all the features here. So before I move into our video blog, which is really what this is all about, I just wanted to point out um, that with Panopto, you can kind of see it in this editing tool, you can do captions, you can do quizzes, you can do integrate slides down here. There's the YouTube button. You can splice out to a YouTube video. We had a faculty member who just used the tool and never came to a training. And in his video, he'd say, so check out this YouTube video. And then it would splice to the YouTube video and come back and he you know, could basically summarize it for his students and kind of pose those questions to say, hey, so start to think about this and start to think about how this might apply to your company and, and that kind of thing. Um, so that's your little peek on Panopto. The great news about student video blogs is that this whole beautiful, beautiful mess is something that your faculty and students don't ever have to touch. But it's there. It's available. Um, I mentioned permissions for a thing. Um, this is just a screenshot of what permissions within it look like. Um, by default, the tool grabs the course roster. Um, so your course roster can both create and view within this folder. Now that becomes critical later for our students because um, by default, your creator is your instructor and your viewers are your students. Um, so the students can't create within your Panopto folder which video blogs they have to create, so we're going to talk about that. And your faculty member, um, depending on what their approach is, they might not want to all their other students to see their student feedback. So this led us to identify different pathways to create it so that we were still maintaining confidentiality, especially for faculty feedback. Um, and for student submissions too, they, you know, some students were shy behind the camera, so they didn't necessarily want all of the other students to see their videos as well. So this becomes critical. The good news is, is that I've already been there, I've already fully documented it, and I can always share that documentation. So I don't, no, no reinventing the wheel here. So 
Before I get into our course screenshots, a lot of this was trial and error. We had a faculty member last fall who said, I'm going to do it. And she had some students who opted to just do YouTube and not use Panopto. She had some students who dove right in and did it as well. The huge advantage that we marketed to the students is that by using Panopto, it's authenticated. It's an authenticated YouTube, which means that unless you make it public, it's private and the students are in control of exactly who is accessing it and they can set it just to their faculty member. So their faculty member can't copy the link and share it with somebody unless it's public. So that enables um, a privacy that can be essential depending on how you're creating your assignments for your students. Now one of the biggest pieces to this, and again I already mentioned it's my favorite part of my job, um, is I had to identify with the faculty, do you want students to share it with each other? Is it more of a forum integration? Um, is it something that we want the cohesive kind of student sharing or is it an assignment? Is it meant to be private? Um, so in this particular faculty member we worked with, she wanted it private. Um, so we really had to go into details regarding permissions and access for our students. To do that, we created various types of documentation. We have full documentation on the tool itself, but we also condensed that just to what the students were going to be doing with their video blogs. We also integrated student pages within lessons. I have a screenshot of that coming up for you. What that enabled was the students could create their own page and the faculty member embedded her video in lessons to mirror the students. So on the left, you had the students' video blog from the week. And on the right, you had the faculty's feedback for the week. Um, so it really kind of did this whole zigzag that worked out so well. We didn't identify that until spring. And that did require me going into her, this faculty member's uh, course, uh, not course, sorry, classroom. And I did a, a trial and error with the students. I walked them through doing a demo. I walked them through embedding it. Totally forgot the most important important piece about this tool. It's not just an LPI tool. It integrates into anywhere that there's a rich text editor. We heard that and we were like, uh, that's amazing. Um, so it can be embedded within a lessons tool. It can be embedded on the students pages for the lessons tool. It can be embedded within a forum. So there's a lot of awesome features there when it comes to that. That's kind of where we had our trial and error with the technical when it came to our permissions is that the catch, <laughs> there's always a caveat, and Panoptos working on it, um, and we've provided them with some excellent feedback on this, is that the tool has to authenticate the student. So if a student can't see the video within lessons, they have to go click on Panopto from their left menu within Sakai, and then they can go back to the lessons and view it. So there's kind of an additional authentication layer. Um, it didn't require an additional sign-in, it just required clicking the tool. <laughs> so that was interesting. And then it came down to faculty permissions and choices. We had faculty creating their own folder and setting the permissions there. We had, their man we had them managing and monitoring their own folders within the courses. Um, so because they have so many options as the administrators of their site, this faculty member actually taught two sections of the same course. So naturally she put a student's feedback in the wrong course. Um, so we kind of had to establish a workflow for her um, because she jokingly said, she said she loves technology, she just needs the tunnel vision. She needs the click this, do this, here you go, it's going to be awesome. Um, so that was our trial and error. Okay, I'm done blabbing, here's all the screenshots. So. When we integrated the videos, this faculty member just used a lessons tool. She kept it, she really was adamant about a super clean um, approach. And here's where all the materials were. So we had the Word document or PDF on how they were using Panopto. It was a custom documentation for video blogs. It literally walked the student through creating their folder, making sure the permissions were accurate, and how to create their videos there. Um, we, I actually recorded using Panopto when I was in their classroom, so we have a Panopto link for that video. I did a second video from my desk where I said, if you weren't in class today, here's how you create your folders. And then we had 
additional documentation and screenshots. Um, and this one, the faculty member actually had put together um, more in regards to how her students were going to be doing it, and that she used a Google Doc here, and you can see that. Um, and then we had a subpage that brought them to student pages, um, and that allowed all the students to create their own page and start that ping pong of their video reception. This screenshot here is what it looks like inside the Panopto tool itself. So this is the faculty's feedback. Um, she started, this is her video response. Um, and one thing I wanted to highlight here is students have the option to upload a video that they created or record right into Panopto. And we kind of had a 50-50 mix on the students. Um, the faculty member actually joked that a lot of her students um, so this was actually, I didn't, I was so excited to present, I didn't give you the background. This course was an uh, education course where, a literacy course, where the students had field work. And the application of video blogs here was a solution to the fact that she, she can't clone herself and she can't see what they're doing every day. She can't, you know, she can bounce around, but she can only spend two to five minutes every, you know, throughout this hour, hour and a half that these um, teaching candidates are spending with these elementary school students. Um, so the video blogs allowed the students to repeat back and that same day say, this is what happened today, this is what I struggled with, these are my successes, this is what I'm going to do next week. Um, and it kind of served as a check-in. And the students felt that this allowed them to be so included um, when their faculty member could only spend so much time with them at the actual session. So the upload media became a critical piece here because about half the students we did a like selfie recording from their cars before they left the parking lot of the elementary school. Um, so it was fresh in their minds, they were responding right away. Um, so that became a key piece here. We did have some other students who would rather do it in their dorm rooms, you know, so you see their their posters behind them um, and, you know, that kind of that kind of perspective. So it allowed for that flexibility, which was really key. This screenshot is a little, is our table of content. Hey, yeah. Sorry, Go. this is Trisha. I have a quick question, if you don't mind, back on the previous yeah. screen about uh, recording a session. So I'm wondering if the Panopto records it right in the browser, or is there any um, utility that has to be downloaded to the person's uh, device in order to do Great the recording? Question. So there is, a, there is something that can be downloaded, and it does function outside of the browser. So the great thing about that is you don't have to be connected to the internet to record. Um, uh -huh. So it does have a plugin that does install, and it's a one-time install. Okay. That's a Thank really good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, <and> that's <laughs> part of why we I went into the classroom with the students is because that one piece, the install, and then seeing how it launches um, on their desktop became kind of critical to how they um, behaved and interacted with it. Um, and depending on time, I can definitely um, – uh, demo that as well. Okay, yeah, if we have time, that'd be cool. Um, awesome. So, I mean, excellent question. So that gave the technical perspective too, and that's why on this screen you see that our getting started, um, it's the first time accessing and downloading. Um, so the integration in within um, Sakai allows for video management and permissions as well as the embedding but that allows it to kind of splice out and record um, on your device, depending on what you're using. Um, so this screenshot is our little snapshot on our documentation. So you can see that the longer list in the back is quite lengthy. It's about 25, I think it's 25 pages. Um, and that's really everything your faculty member could, could need. Um, it talks about sharing links to individual ones, um, it talks about downloading a recording, so you can download it after you've uploaded it. Um, and that's available only to uh, faculty. Um, 
it talks about using the rich text editor, forms, assignments, and lessons. Um, and then we have instructor options for how they can also finagle video blogs or something like that. So in that case, it talks about the student pages. The front forward picture um, is what we provided for students. So it was condensed. It was already identified that they were going to be using student pages. So we yoinked out all the documentation about forms and assignments um, because of how they were going to be using it. So this is your screenshot of what it looked like in the lessons tool. Um, I particularly picked out the student because the very top video was her test video. Um, and you can actually see, I don't know what kind of face I'm making, but I'm actually in the background of her video. And I was walking around the room, uh, making sure everyone was connecting and downloading that plugin and that everything worked out. Um, so, uh, so that's just kind of funny. I really love this screenshot just because she actually captured me behind her with her test demo. Um, and on the right hand side, you see the, the faculty member actually did a test response. She actually, for every student, um, talked about the lessons page and how they were going to be using the columns and the sections. Um, down below, this student was one who recorded in her dorm room. Um, so she's just, you can see the window behind her, even though I blurred it out. Um, you can see she just kind of has the walls and the windows behind her. Um, and on the right hand side is a really good example of how our faculty member kind of started saving videos in the wrong folder. So this is what comes up if someone hasn't authenticated um, or if they don't have permission to access this video. Um, so the nice thing about that is that the red flag, thankfully at Marist, it was literally a red flag, um, as to when students had to just cycle back, click on Panopto to be able to view a, a video that might have implemented that layer of permissions and authentication. So last we have a, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to uh, stop you for a second and let you know we have a question wondering if these video recordings could be used in tests and quizzes, potentially for language labs and or you know to to upload as responses embedded in the editor. There. That's have you guys? Great question. I think it's one of those things that we haven't tried it yet um mm -hmm. but i can find out by the end of the day actually <laughs> okay. correct would, that'd be awesome i would assume so especially since it's we've seen it works across the board with a rich text editor um so right. the, the difficult thing and, and we found this with faculty even with using the lessons tool um when they had the option to add content and link to content and their concept of what it means to link or embed when embedding is for media sometimes they think embed text um, so we kind of had to have like a re like a jargon conversation. Um, I could totally see that that being very possible, um, but that faculty might have to do the short answer essay response. I believe that is correct. And uh, the uh, the other thing that that instructors would need to be aware of is this is going to add to the time that students are going to need <laughs> to complete the quiz, if they're going to be recording and then uploading to a question response and tests and quizzes. So, right. It, so it's I assume it, assuming it works, which I assume it does. I would assume it does, so I can definitely confirm later. Um, and then, you know, just as a faculty member would embed in a text editor like a YouTube video, I can pretty much guarantee that you can definitely embed a video um, into it as well. So I can definitely see an advantage from that. I, I'm totally picturing like um, like game shows when they're like, you know, it's that like, uh, what's his name? I can't think of that famous actor. Like that voice of like, here you see blah, 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 the pelicans and, and name that island or something like that. And it's like Jeopardy. And it's like, what is, you know, the Galapagos or something. Um, I could definitely see like a video prompt um, integrating into quizzes really well. Um, so that could be totally mm -hmm. cool, but not something you can't do with YouTube. But the nice thing about that is that you're talking about super tiny videos that at that point, uploading and managing within YouTube is going to be a nuisance. Um, so definitely yeah. a huge advantage there for that. Yeah. Um, something to keep in mind with that is that, and this is where it comes to the faculty permissions and access. Um, and my brain's just, I have my light bulbs going off, um, is that the faculty member would want more of a repository folder 
those are not videos that they would create in that specific section, that specific term, that specific course. That's something that they would link to on a shared folder um, within their Panopto tool. Um, so just something to keep in mind, that's where the permissions really came into perspective, is that we had a faculty member who recorded in one site and then linked it in another, but it was a wow. roster limitation that we see across the board with lessons. If they're linking back to another site that their students don't have access to, they're kind of is blind. Is that an to example it. of your authentication service there where exactly. someone has done that? Yeah. Yep. Um, so that could be that that faculty member actually linked her response to the student into the wrong course. Um, so that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. So last but not least, part of my motivation to sharing this today was a faculty testimonial. And that was this one professor who I could have sworn, like I said, love hate relationship. She like, I probably saw her at her worst and at her best. Um, at the end of all this, when we were finally like, I jokingly say we were like a phoenix rising, rising from the ashes because we, we took a few hits learning this new tool together. Um, she said to me, she said, you know what, Corey? Um, she said, the best part I think about this is seeing what kind of video the students submitted in January and then seeing what they're now submitting in May. Um, so she noticed between the two that you know, when you when you have a student just answer a one to two page reflection and it's just done in Microsoft Word, um, that, that you know they have the time to just kind of write and it's well composed and they can proofread. Whereas that video is on the fly, and the biggest piece to this is these are teaching candidates. These are students who, when they graduate with a bachelor's degree, are going to be looking to pursue their New York State certification to be teachers. So she talked about how. She wasn't assessing their ability to write. That wasn't about it at all. It was about how they were flowing and how cohesive they were with the daily experiences. And she mentioned how this video blog, um, and I alluded to it before, the students felt connected. The students felt that they they didn't have to, you know, fight for their faculty's time. That they didn't need office hours. Because every week they were saying, this is what happened and this was my struggle. And the faculty member set limits for herself. She was going to respond to them in a timely manner so that they had her feedback for their next fieldwork experience. So the students had to submit these by, let's say fieldwork was on Tuesday, they had to submit these by Thursday. And she guaranteed feedback by Sunday evening. Um, so that gave her the weekend to grade. And she jokingly said that she had to commit to losing a little bit of her weekends for the semester, but it really wasn't that bad. And she actually thought that she gained time because she could respond in three to five minutes doing a video and just drop it into the student page. Whereas actually cohesively writing feedback or, you know, sending links and attachments and, and support like that was a completely different approach. So this really facilitated teacher collaboration um, our students felt connected, our students felt what they hopefully expect to feel in some of their first few years of teaching with a faculty, with a, with a teacher mentor, um, which is something that a lot of our local schools do is they'll set up new teachers with more weathered teachers um, who've been in that district and worked with those students for some time. Um, and as I mentioned, we had some really awesome other perspectives. We had some faculty who are using it to um, create videos and then share them out, create them across site. Um, we had that one faculty member who, um, I happened to know somebody who was pursuing their, who's pursuing their master's degree and said, oh yeah, that, that tool Panopto, yeah, my faculty uses it for YouTube. And I went in and, and emailed the professor who I had worked with and he was like, yeah, you mentioned it with this new tool and I just kind of tried it out. And I hadn't talked to him since and he was splicing in YouTube videos like nobody's business, it was really awesome. Awesome. So that is the end. How are we on time? That is the end of my PowerPoint. Oh, we're great on, we're pretty good on time. We've got, a, I would say, you know, maybe um, eight more minutes if you want to do a little demo. Awesome. Um, so um, I'll show you adding Panopto. So Panopto shows up under our Island plugin tools. Um, so. 
Um, it's your standard edit site tools. It's our scroll all the way down, and it pops, pops up right down here. Um, and we did add to the message here, it's recommended you attend a workshop to discuss best, best practices. Um, and we said that for WebEx as well. You know, that kind of allowed us to hopefully grab a few people to say like, hey, contact us because you might be using this wrong without saying, hey, you might be using this wrong. Um, <laughs> um, yes, we call it Maris YouTube. I, now I can see the comments because I'm not sharing that screen anymore. Canopto, the internal YouTube. Um, and I like if that. you want to be external and public too, it lets you do that too. Um, and it lets you do things that YouTube doesn't. It lets you splice in those quizzes. Um, a feature request that we had for Panopto is currently the quizzes are definitely low stakes. It does allow you to integrate quizzes, um, but it doesn't spit back into the gradebook yet. Mm -hmm. um, so this is um, what the Panopto integration looks like. Um, it defaults to this course site. You can see that listed up here where my mouse is. Um, and any videos that you create within here are visible to your students by default. We have some faculty who say, I'm going to control that in lessons, so they hide the Panopto tool. That being said, when it comes to video blogs, Panopto has to be visible <laughs> um, because right. students are using that same tool. Um, so here, uh, we just have a bunch of like, you know, testing, we did some recording. Um, in Panopto, if you record using a PowerPoint, every time you advance the slide, it creates um, an entry in your table of contents automatically, which is awesome. Um, it also does a pretty good job doing auto captions, very similar to YouTube. Um, sometimes it does pick up crazy words, but that's pretty standard across the board. Um, and I'm just going to give a little demo of when you create. So when you come in and create, and you click record, um, it does pop up to say you can either launch or download. And we'll click launch. And I'm trying to think if I've downloaded it since I recently got a new computer. So when launch. when students use this, do they get the option to launch Panopto or download? Or yes. Only download? Okay. So here's the catch is that if Panopto didn't launch, make sure you've downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that's uh, that does prompt for that. So that's kind of a like fail approach, like, okay, here's your next steps, try this out. Mm -hmm. um, so I recently got a new computer in the last month. Um, so I actually do need to install it. So you get a nice little preview of what the installer looks like. And it's your standard, I call them the next, next, next installers. You just click next and you click install and you click go and shuffles through and you're done. Um, and then it launches. So the great thing here is it prompts you for a username. You don't need it. You sign in with your Marish credentials. But that's only happening because I um, had to download it. So I just pulled that out. Not to. It says, do you want to open it to confirm your opening something outside your browser, and it automatically authenticates you. Oh, okay. okay we're previews. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so the authentication you just saw only came up because um, because it had the download. So just in a series of, of downloading that came up. Um, but normally they click launch, it pops up, and this is your external recorder. Um, this does create a, a desktop icon. You can see down here. Uh, the little Panopto icon, so you can see that it um, is running on my desktop, not within iLearn, um, but they're linked. So anything I record in here um, does spit back into iLearn. That's where that authentication becomes key. And you can see at the top I'm authenticated. I see Sean is asking what version of Panopto am I using. That's a really good question. Um, I just downloaded it from the Panopto site. <laughs> uh, so, so, okay, settings. Is this the settings you're talking about? Maybe advanced settings? I don't see any like version or anything. Oh, lower, lower right. right. 5.6.0 ah. point numbers. So I'll leave that on the screen if that's helpful. Um, and I did have to download that right just right now, so I don't know if that helps. Um, 
so um, awesome, no problem. I had no idea where to find the version. We've never had any issues. It's a brand new tool to us, so I didn't even think of that. <laughs> um, so this is where we get some like, so this is where that instruction come, becomes kind of key. We have a lot of faculty who record their screen. And in this case, this faculty member, so we included this in the, in the student documentation, is that we had to tell them not to capture their screen, so to uncheck this little checkbox here, or else what they were submitting to their faculty member is exactly what you see. Um, the actual video reflection was this itty bitty little tiny video, um, and then they had this whole screen capture of them doing nothing. Um, the faculty member hopes that f the students might actually like share a website with her or they might actually share their screen and navigate in the future but that was her like that's one of her like one more bite like oh uh, next time <laughs> that's kind of the 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 hopes and dreams um and you know she really needs student champions for that and she didn't feel comfortable with that this year because it was this new tool um so she wanted to build her confidence while building theirs um so once things are recorded um, you are able to manage recording. I don't have any here because I'm under my admin account, um, not my user account. Um, but you'll see that your recordings for the site do come up in here as well. And all of your settings and sharing and permissions are completely managed in here. Um, so any editing you want to do, if you click that, it opens up the editor. The sharing brings up your share options, whether you're sharing a link, um, quiz results, if there is a quiz, this one doesn't have it, um, and there's all sorts of, oh, there's so many bells and whistles here, I could talk about Panopto all day, um, and those settings allow you to hide or share, um, which again is where those permissions became uh, pretty key. What stats are recorded? Uh, let me go into my settings. Um, so are you talking about there, quiz results? If you if you close that there um, back on that oh, screen there is a stat. Yeah. yeah. I was mentally thinking quiz results. Um, it's your views. <laughs> um, as per students. Um, I don't have any data on this one. Of course, I can't pick a very good example of one. I think this one might have. Yep. So there's your statistics. Um, so it does give you your views. Uh, by video time as well as dates. So um, this little blip here indicates that we skipped. I might have watched this and skipped this time slot here. Um, and then this is your, your users and what uh, unique users that have viewed it. And it is downloadable. It does spit out a CSV as well. So this is just your visual um, statistics that have been viewed. Nice. Thought these guys were in here. Great question about the webcast capability. We have not, but we're planning on testing it with some upcoming workshops. Um, it's kind of, so what Sean is referring to is that you can do a scheduled recording, and you can see this as well when you watch Panopto. Um, so you can actually do a webcast, and it does it live, and then it gives you a link. Um, we haven't used this yet in that case because we have the kind of sister approach of uh, WebEx. We usually recommend that people use that just because I think that really does more of that. That's initial approach is the live sessions. Um, we haven't done this yet. It's not something we've tried out. Um, it's definitely on our list of things to test. Um, and we just haven't quite established a need for it just because we have WebEx that kind of fits those needs. Um, that's a really good question. Sean says uh, they've been they've been using the webcast capability, but it's tremendously slow, um, which could be because of the network and the fact that they are using a hosted version right. instead of um, a local um, host. How about you guys? Are you um, hosted in the cloud or locally? Uh, great um, question. So with Panopto, I believe we are local. Um, we are huge proponents of that, but I can find out for sure. Um, as I mentioned, how Panopto kind of fell on my lap, 
our web department did all at the time we actually didn't have we we had it we've had an interesting couple of years here um at the time we didn't have a director or an assistant director um so it was that's what i meant by it kind of just like fell on my lap like here have any tools mm -hmm. really cool um so our director of web had purchased it so that's a really good question i can definitely find out mm -hmm. Um, I know we are huge proponents of having things hosted ourselves, um, oh. but, so, oh, so it looks like Sean said it looks like we're local only. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Good eyes, Sean. Yeah. Oops. So I would assume that that's probably from our, um, under our share here. Nice. Um, yeah, Marist. Well, no, it says Marist There you hosted. go. Um, so I don't know if that hosted so. means, yeah. So I don't know if that hosted means it's Marist hosted or if it means that we're hosted, meaning Panopto hosted. And they just gave you a domain on there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, see, you're hosted. Oh. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like we're hosted. Um, so Marist is really big about owning things um, and having it to ourselves. And I think what the, re the great thing about this tool um, that allows us to kind of stretch um, our preferences here is that you can download um, um, these videos too. So whenever they've been uploaded, uh, you do have the option to edit and download. I'm trying to remember where this is. I think it's under manage, delete, process. There's so many options in here. Um, outputs, that's where it is. So under outputs, um, you have the option to download and you can do picture in picture. You can do primary only, secondary only. Um, you know, definitely a few options there. Um, typically, the way that videos are presented. Um, to your students, yeah, it usually shows up to students like this. Um, so as you can see, there's the video, actual web capture on the left, and on the right is the screen capture, um, where it looks like Louisa captured her capturing, her capturing, her capturing. So the video <laughs> getting smaller, smaller, smaller. So, um, but yeah. Was that so, Louisa in? In the foreground of that? It was. Yep. <laughs> I thought I'd recognize that profile. Yep. Oh. So, Corey, I wonder if you would be willing to share a link to your documentation and or the recording you created to help the instructor get started or the Absolutely. class get started. Definitely share that. I'm trying to think if our, I don't know as if. I think our slides. Uh, it might be. It might not be public because we don't use Google. Um, okay. What do is what I can do is I can definitely share it later, and I can. Um, would it be helpful if I blasted that out to the group? Sure. Okay. Um, and then I'll just double check the video permissions on my demo. It's super casual. It's me standing in front of the students, so it's a little less formal than I would normally present myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll make sure I have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'll make sure I have a good one to share. But the documentation really does a really great job of walking our students through everything. Um, let me just pull that up. Um, what we actually did is we kind of did a, a stop sign approach. So please note, if you're experiencing any errors, it's, you need to make sure you log into Pinopto just by clicking the tool. Um, and we kind of have a little stop sign everywhere. So if it's not available, it needs to be added. Um, here's mm -hmm. your download, here's your open. Um, don't sign in here, let it authenticate you naturally, you know, that kind of thing. So right. we've really, um, I mean, you Gone can see by the documentation. We've all the possible things they need to watch out for, yeah. That's great, fantastic. Well, this has been really a great presentation and um, it makes me even more excited about um, using it here at the University of Virginia. We also have Panopto integrated into our Sakai instance and um, uh, makes me a lot more confident in what's possible with this tool. So thank you so much. No problem. Um, what I'm looking to do, and it's one of those things where this was just kind of a, I call it a crime of opportunity presentation. Um, I'm actually looking to reach out to that particular faculty, the secret, my secret champion, um, mm -hmm. to see if I can borrow one of his videos to, to distribute, to really share with people how he's spliced oh, yeah. in YouTube. Yeah. Um, he's really done yeah. awesome. Another, uh, and it allows you to do quizzes too. 
um, which is really great from the editing perspective. I know we're almost out of time, Sue. Um, and it does give you. Yeah, we, we have a couple uh, of minutes, so but, but we probably need to wrap up. So sorry. Uh, I would love no, for you no, to show no. that. But. <laughs> um, so, you know, if it is something that anybody wanted me to like further delve into at any time, I'm definitely open to connecting um, great. You know, outside of today's session. Um, I know the, the one downside about Panopto, I jokingly, I actually teach some community classes on using iPhones and iPads. And at the start of my presentation, I say, like, I could talk about this all day. Like, there's no end game. <laughs> um, and there's absolutely no way. What we find with Panopto is the best part is to sit with your students and sit with your faculty, uh, not your students, so sit with your faculty and say, what are you assessing? What are you looking to do? Um, you know, what, you know, to what extent and what do you want to do? What's your end game? And that really allows us to identify the best tools. And in this case, Panopto, for some faculty, we say splice in YouTube videos, you know, splice in some quiz questions. Obviously, that doesn't apply to our student, our student videos, but that had a completely different turnaround for our students being able to spit, you know, spit back what they're experiencing in their field work. Um, so I yeah. see the question, how long are instructor videos retained in student videos? At this point in time, um, it's more of a space than it is time. Um, so because it's a brand new tool, I totally foresee the maybe a year or two years from now as it gains pop popularity for us to turn around and you know have to say or identify our heaviest users to say you know remove videos. Um, but part of the reason for that is you know you create a video on YouTube and and sometimes the shelf life is two to three years. So we also teach our faculty how to maintain that shelf life. Um, you know, don't say I've been at Marist for five years. Say I started at Marist in 2010. Um, thanks, Wilma. Um, so we also kind of facilitate the pedagogical approach behind that to help our faculty better facilitate that shelf life. So that's the nice thing about being retained. Um, the student videos we're not as concerned about. Once they graduate, we do have a process to identify accounts. Um, and inactive, identifying inactive accounts. Um, so that's a completely different approach there. Well, we are at time now, Corey. And uh, again, I'm just so delighted that um, you presented on this topic. This is really exciting and just a great presentation. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, since we are out of time, I'm just going to uh, hope mentioned that uh, our next meeting is is canceled because hopefully most of us will be at Open Aperio and I look forward to seeing everybody there. And we will meet again on June 20th to hear more about the Sakai Rubric project. So I hope to see you again there as well. Thanks everybody. Thanks so much.